folks, welcome back to another episode of the Field and Garden Podcast. I'm your friend Lisa Mason Ziegler, and I appreciate you joining me here today. And you know, I fall, I'm guilty of really not um, sharing always that the whole reason that this podcast and so many of the resources that I am able to offer you is because of you. You know, our our friends, our customers, our followers. And I just appreciate that so much. And because of your loyalty and support of the gardenersworkshop.com, whether that means that you're purchasing your gardening and farming supplies from us, um, you're liking and sharing and telling your friends about all the different um, resources that we make available, our online courses. Oh my goodness, y'all. Seed starting course, um, how to have a little three by 10 cutting garden, or if you want to ramp up and become a flower farmer, we offer everything you need to be able to build a flower-based business. And I just have never really taken a moment to say how thankful I am for you guys, because I think as much as you embrace and enjoy this information, we, my team, and I love bringing it all to you. It is far more, I will say, it is far more complicated to bring it all to you than I ever dreamed of, but that's part of it, right? So I just had to take a moment to say that because I appreciate, I get so many notes from people that are in the dreaming stage of becoming a gardener or a flower farmer or are trying to push through struggle of doing it or those that are like me that have been doing it that are now embarking on other areas based on it. It's just, it's very exciting, y'all, and I thank you so much. So I'm recording this the end of January or close thereof, which means we are in highfalutin, seed starting mania. And I say that because this is when, you know, your mailbox is full of catalogs every day. Um, You know, you're thinking about it. You're cold. We're stuck inside. And what this all means is that we are being inundated with seed information, seed starting requests for information, help, troubleshooting, And I just thought I would run through some of those things that I find are the common questions. And y'all, I could do this every day and talk about something different in it. I understand that seed starting is pretty complex. And it seems like some people just catch it. And it's not that they're smarter than anybody else. It's just that they happen to have the conditions available to them, whether that means a heated and air-conditioned space that they have all the room they need to do what they got to do. To the people that were like me when I first started, where I lived in a small bungalow with no extra buildings to do it in. Um, So I see from all spectrums. Um, So those folks that are gifted with the best, you know, thank goodness for you, but there's more of us that don't have that. And that's what leads us to all these little troubles. Um, And it clouds us from figuring out the basic steps. So I just thought I'd run through these. Food for thought on a Saturday morning, right? All right, so the very first thing in um, my, this is my thought process. The very first thing when I see a a flower or get look at a pack of seeds First thing I think, oh, is this a warm season or a cool season annual? And for those of you that aren't familiar, whenever I'm speaking of starting seeds, it's typically of annuals, and I classify them in one of two ways, cool season or warm season. I tend to just kind of simplify things for me. And that's the first thing I think, because that tells you whether it, you know, goes into this box or that box. And when that box or this box's time comes up, I just pick up that whole box and know that, okay, now is the time for me to focus on these seeds. 
So I segregate them basically. So you've got to know that piece of information. And if it doesn't tell you on the seed packet, or if you don't know, simply enter the name of whatever the seed is into a search engine asking cool season or warm season annual. And hopefully you'll get an answer. Um, the next step that helps me to figure out, okay, I figured that out. So when would that f that group of seeds be planted? Like when do I plant cool season and when do I plant warm season? Um, that is really a key piece of information that, you know, I recommend to everybody to have a little notebook that's like their seed starting guide. And these are the kinds of pieces of information that would be at the front of the book. You know, when are, when's the earliest I can plant warm season stuff? When's the latest? When do I plant cool season stuff? So you have to figure that out also. And then here's a big one, y'all. This is, I, I find it so interesting, especially when I was back traveling and speaking. You know, and you talk to people after you've given conferences and so funny that most often I will say that this happened at big flower and garden shows more than um, than a garden club or a master gardener group. Um, I think that the big flower and garden shows have a more diverse mix of people, whether they're gardeners or wannabe gardeners or just guys that have been drugged to the flower and garden show by their wife to carry their purse. You know, it's a real mix of people. Um, but I love it when they walk up to me after a seed starting session and say, well, you know, I've decided this year I'm direct seeding everything. And they say it like it's really up to them. <laughs> and it really is up to them. But if you want to be successful, friends, you have got to consider what is the preferred method of starting for that seed. And they all have different, each one can have um, go one way or the other. And it's all based on the conditions that that seed needs to break dormancy. Think about dormancy is what they're in when they're sitting in seed packets. Who knows where, right? And then to break that, to get them to start growing, you have to do some key things for them. Well, some seeds need more or less than others do. And that can be based on the conditions. And so... You know, the way that a seed is the easiest to start is always my preferred method. And it's not what most people think. You know, a lot of people assume the easiest way to start seeds is planting seeds directly out in the garden. And in fact, nothing could be further from the truth for me anyway. And most commercial growers, we want the most efficient, the most um, labor saving best success method, and that typically is planting transplants. So if you don't know which way a seed that you have prefers, that's another search engine question, and you can find that. So then the next thing you have to figure out is, you know, we're assuming that we're talking about now transplants, you know, when, it's, when should you um, start the seed to have it to a good size that you want to be able to plant it out in the garden at the proper time for where you are, right? So you have to figure out when to start it. And if you're a first time seed starter, you just kind of have to jump and figure this out. Each and every people ask me all the time, well, how far in advance do you start that seed? Well, I'll tell them, but I will also tell you that after 24 years of starting seeds, I provide a pretty dreamy spot for seeds to start. What that translates to is that my transplants sprout quickly, grow quickly, and get quickly to the stage that I want them to put them out into the field. But that is not the case for most people. So comparing yourself to the way I do it sets most people, I hear it all the time, my seedlings don't look like yours. My seedlings are three weeks old and still are only a quarter of the size of yours. Those are all based on conditions. But as a jumping off point, and because we're now in the end of January, so we're talking about starting cool season seeds at this time of the year, um, 
my rule is I like to have a little bit bigger transplant to go out in the garden than I would once we get to spring and summer and we're planting warm season. Because when you plant this cool season out in the garden, it's not going to start growing vegetatively immediately because it's cold outside, y'all. I mean, we're we're still, you know, I mean, below freezing at night. And um, yes, cool season hardy annuals, take that like a champ. So I would say to you, um, as a jumping off point, four weeks, if you're soil blocking, and we'll talk about that next, but um, four weeks is a good jumping off point until you can establish how long does it take you in your environment to grow a seedling of the size that you want to plant out, right? And, you know, I can't, we can't do deep dives on individual plants, but there is a handful of plants, warm and cool, that are just super slow growers. You know, that's kind of what their jam is. What comes to my mind when I think of those is eucalyptus, warm season, lisianthus, cool season, and rudbeckias, cool season. All of those are super slow growers. They're like torturously slow. Um, so there are exceptions to that rule, but I say four weeks is a good jumping off point until you can come up with your own little secret equation for your situation, for where you're gardening. So with soil blocking, which if you're not familiar with that, please go to our website, thegardenersworkshop.com and check out, we have a video guide under the Learning Center. And there are a lot of different little short videos um, that are kind of like frequently asked question stuff. Um, so if you're just looking for a little glimpse, I also have a seed starting made easy course, which is like 25 bucks, y'all. It's a 90 minute course of me taking you from the beginning to the end, meaning from starting to planting it out in the garden, as well as a session on direct seeding stuff. Um, but that'll give you a glimpse at what soil blocking is. Um, soil blocking is the way that the Dutch and English have done it for decades. I found it from Elliot Coleman, um, and Elliot points out that it is just, there's just so many. It is a simple, easy, superior way to start seeds that is super eco-friendly. Um, and so I'll let you go look at that. But for soil blocking, when we look at a seed packet that says it'll take six weeks, start six weeks before you want to plant it, basically, right? If you're going to soil block that, I would make that four weeks. You shave a third of the time off for growing the seedling. And that is because of the healthy environment with no container, meaning the roots get so much oxygen that um, they just simply grow faster. Then you put them into their, their dreamy environment, and it is really fascinating. Even 24 years in, I'm still fascinated over how quickly, how beautifully, and how amazing the germination is. Um, so I also, I'm just reading over my own notes. I don't always be able to read my own handwriting, y'all. The other thing that is totally awesome about soil blocking is that you can handle them younger than you can a plug cell grown plant. What that means is because of soil block, and I use the three quarter inch blocker 95% of the time, um, because the roots quickly move throughout that little block, you can handle those seedlings so much earlier. If you tried to plant or handle, let's just say a zinnia, which is a warm season annual, um, we plant them out when they're two to three weeks old. If you tried to get a zinnia out of a cell pack that early, most often the roots haven't even encompassed the cell of soil yet. And so when you pull it out, it kind of falls apart, um, which prevents you. You have to wait until the roots are really mature and really wound around to kind of hold the soil together to make that a quick and easy transaction. Soil blocking, that is not true. You can almost handle them within a week if you wanted to, but they are so much quicker and easier to plant. Literally, I pick up a whole cluster of 20, which is what the tool makes, and you just lay it on the palm of your hand and break them apart. Um, I mean, you can plant soil blocks so much quicker. And then 
Here is the rest of the steps very quickly. So we sow the seeds. You have to know, does the seed get covered? Does the seed need darkness to germinate or does it need light? That determines whether you need to either push the seed deeper into the block to create darkness or do you surface sow it? It should tell you that on your seed packet. All seeds do go on to a seedling heat mat. Cool season seeds, we put a cookie cooling rack, like you when you take cookies out of the oven, that little rack that you put them on. We have found that placing that rack on the heat mat and placing your trays on the rack, creating that little one inch dead space between the mat and the bottom of the trays is the perfect condition for cool season hardy annuals. Cool season hardy annuals definitely need warmth for 24 seven, but they don't need it hot like the warm season annuals do. And that cookie cooling rack gives us those conditions. Um, the air temperature in the room that we are using a seedling heat mat, um, it varies from cool to warm. For cool season hardy annuals, I'm looking for 65 to 70 degrees. My room is 68 degrees. Um, that not only um, is the perfect air temperature for germinating cool season seeds that are on a seedling heat mat, but also when they move over to the grow light off of the heat, that is warm enough to induce vegetative growth. Um, and then when we move them from the heat to the light, which is when we see 50% of the blocks on that tray showing signs of life, that means sprouting um, to actually sprouted. We move them to a grow light that provides 16 hours of daylight a day. We all, we don't even have 16 hours of daylight, right? Um, and so that is, you know, the common thing that we hear is that, oh my gosh, my seedlings are not nearly as gorgeous as yours. Why are mine so gorgeous? Y'all, it's because I'm giving them what they want. And what do they want? To keep them short, stocky, green, healthy, sturdy little stems. 16 hours of light a day. My grow lights come on from a timer at 6 a.m. and stay on till 10 p.m. So the other thing that I do once they move to grow lights is when I'm watering them, I often brush the top of the seedlings with my hand. That just creates, oh, it's almost looking like you're petting them, y'all. Um, it looks, it, that kind of helps to build up the strength of their stem. Um, so we water, I water, once a day. You should not have to water more than once a day. My room in the summertime climbs to almost 100 degrees, just like a greenhouse does. And if I only have to water once a day, you should only have to water once a day, right? So when I water, you should definitely do it in the morning. I use a watering can without a sprinkler head with a little pouring. You know, just take the sprinkler attachment off and I pour water into the side of the tray. Um, and you'll there's a, a video of me watering Ordering, um, on that learning center at the gardenersworkshop.com on the video guide. On Mondays, I add food, um, seaweed and fish, liquid organic fertilizer to my watering can. So everybody under lights gets a dose of food on Mondays. And every Wednesday, everything in the grow room gets watered with natural. That is the preventative measure that I take to control fungus gnats which is a reality when you are um, starting seedlings indoors. Um, so when you go to water in the morning, your blocks or whatever you're growing in should be just about dry. If your seed starting is not drying out in a 24-hour cycle, then your air temperature is not warm enough. That's how you prevent algae and mold from growing and how you induce great vegetative growth. So you need to up your air temperature. Growing in a garage at this time of the year does not cut it, y'all, I'm afraid to say. Um, that's one of the things that I just absolutely, I guess it's what really got me started with seed starting is I was able to soil block. Now remember, I live in a bungalow, right? 
I was able to start seeds literally on the bar in my kitchen, and I had a grow light hanging in my pantry. I gave up a shelf of food, and I was able to start a vast number of seedlings because of I used the small soil blocker. That's that's a whole journey in itself, how I kind of came to all that conclusion. Um, I will tell you that the height of, I mean, a, a, a highlight of um, my farm and gardening so far of these 24 years moment was when I got to meet Elliot Coleman at a big conference um, I was doing in um, Texas. And he was there also speaking and I had a booth set up. Suzanne and I were there. It was a multi-day event and I saw him coming and he came to our booth and I was able to tell him what we did and how we did it. And we do it differently than he does a little bit because we don't have greenhouses at all. Um, and so we've tweaked soil blocking to a tabletop method, meaning we use trays with no drainage holes so that you can use them on racks easily, quickly, and efficiently. And I got the nod, y'all, and it really was a really banner moment for me. Um, so much for respect for all the work that he um, is doing now. And so I attribute soil blocking to my success um, because I was able to do it in my home, which then warped into, I had a building um, that has a grow room in it. Um, so anybody that wants to start seeds can start seeds with soil blocking in a very small spot. Um, literally, our little tabletop grow light, which only takes up 24 inches long by 12 inches deep, literally could sit on the top of a clothes dryer. Um, and that will support... God, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think it's like 240 of the little solar blocks until they go out to be hardened off to go to the garden. That's phenomenal, y'all. That means you could do it in your spare bedroom. You could do it anywhere in your room, a closet, right? So soil blocking is liberating. So friends, thanks for joining me here today and head over to thegardenersworkshop.com. Fall into our learning center. We have tons of resources. We have courses if you need to learn from A to Z. Um, but if you need some tips, um, you can find them over there. As well as, you know, friends, you can join me. I am live several times a week. And the connection page is right there on the homepage of thegardenersworkshop.com. And friends, spring is coming. We hope, right? It is coming, so hang on and get busy inside. Till we meet again, ciao.